So the Geico Motorcycle High Point National in the 450 class. You know the story coming in. Jet Lawrence have won every moto so far, but a different challenger today with Ken Roxon coming in to race High Point, his first pro motocross race of the year, drew a huge crowd, and he was having fun. We didn't know how he would perform, though, since he had never raced for this team on this Suzuki in this series. Off the start, Jet able to get up front early. Special treat for sure having Ken come to the series and um, show these guys what he can do. That was a great job. But yeah, great start by Jet Lawrence. If you didn't yeah. like this, you're not going to like what you saw the second moto either. But man, Kenny, uh, he made some really clutch passes early on. You got the second and then took advantage because a rare mistake from Lawrence. A lot of good guys going down at the bottom of the hills there because of these deep ruts. Not a very forgiving racetrack. And so Roxon's in the lead, and Lawrence is going to have to hustle to get back to him with the moto win streak on the line. He was actually in third when he got up. Garrett March makes a great day. I mean, this guy, man, he, he deserves it. Uh, came from a long ways back, even in the second moto, but Garrett rode a phenomenal race here, uh, the whole first moto. And then Lawrence catches Roxon. The battle is on late. He's going to make the pass coming down this hill right here, a lot different than what we saw. Uh, the first moto in the 250. He goes around the outside, makes the move to take the lead. And it's not over just yet. No, Roxon's showing some fight here. They start going downhill right after that jump. And here it is from Roxon. Kenny, very, very good at counter moves. When I say counter move, meaning if he gets past, he tries to make an explosive move to get back by the guy he just been past, overtaken from. So Jed has to counter move himself. Outside line, more momentum over this jump inside of the next corner. Got it. And Roxon would stay pretty close down the stretch, but on the last lap, watch this. Yeah, check this out. He's going to get it hung up behind this lapper. He goes to turn out early of that rut, and that rut was just too deep, grabbed his front end and pulled him down to the ground and couldn't get the bike started. You can see right there, he couldn't roll the bike and get it neutral. He talked about that. But uh, hey, you know what? He didn't have really much at stake. It was kind of win or bust here. So uh, nevertheless, it's great to have him out there. And the win again goes to Jet Lawrence. 7-0 on the year. Moto2, Jeff's in the middle, gets bumped around, and he's about fifth or sixth while Roxon gets the motosport.com hold uh -huh. Yeah, A.M. Plessinger almost had it, but had got in there a little too hot, which that's common. You know, you come in with so, so much speed, he couldn't let up. If he did, Ken would have ran into him. But nevertheless, this is what Ken is so good at. He is so explosive, especially these first couple laps. He did it a lot during Supercross season, where he'll just try to check out and then maintain that gap. And then Plessinger goes down trying to get Cian Cirillo, holds up Lawrence, lets Ferrandez get by. Oh, AP, I feel like he could see the pass coming. Got a little happy with the throttle, lays the bike over, bike goes over the rut. Cian Cirillo was challenging Roxon for the lead for a bit, then dropped back. Here is the pass for second from Lawrence. And I love this drone shot. This drone shot can really show the difference in lines and angles that these racers are taking. And I'm going to tell you, the number nine of Adam Cian Cirillo made Jet Lawrence work for it. Adam started to get a good drive. I feel like Jet could sense that. He started really manipulating and working the bike, going through those rhythm, uh, rollers. And then finally the lead is gone for Roxon and the challenge applied for the 18. This is late. Well, at the end of the day, I'm wondering if Jet Lawrence is, was, was uh, playing with our minds here. I'm like, well, oh, he doesn't have it. But he would later say that he wasn't super uh, comfortable on the bike. They possibly made a wrong change to the fork. So it took him some time to get used to it and adapt and, to it. And once he did, he was able to get Roxon. Roxon said he learned some lines. He's not too, too far back at the end, but it doesn't matter. Lawrence wins again. That makes him undefeated in overall and Moto wins, and great point, RC. It's the first time Lawrence and Roxon have ever raced each other, so they congratulated each other on a great battle, and Cien Sulo would end up on the overall podium as well. Very popular trio with the fans. And then the hard work begins in rebuilding these motorcycles and heading to our next race. Lawrence makes it easy to determine the overall. Cien Sulo's 4-4 gives him third, just one point ahead of Ferrandis. Webb is fifth overall, Marchbank sixth, Masterful, Plessinger, Harlan, Derek Drake in the top 10. It has been a privateer field day every weekend in Pro Motocross while we wait for some of the uh, 450 factory riders to come back or guys to jump back in like Roxon did today. Making for a very odd way this series has transpired this year. We don't even know who you're going to be seeing with every week. And that would include Chase Sexton. Will we get him back or when will we get him back? 